This may be the world's unluckiest city. In 2010, it was hit by an enormous earthquake measuring 7.1 on the Richter scale. Then, just a few months later, it was hit again by a 6.3 quake. As a result, 80% of the entire city was razed, gone. But it wasn't wiped off the map. The remarkable resilience and perseverance of the people who live here has helped them engineer their way out of an unimaginable situation. This is the story of how the world's unluckiest city was almost completely rebuilt from scratch. New Zealand is a country that's had more than its fair share of natural disasters. The nation sits on the Ring of Fire, a string of volcanoes and seismically active sites that are responsible for some of the worst earthquakes in history, like the 2011 earthquake and tsunami in Japan, and the 1906 earthquake in San Francisco that killed 3,000 people. New Zealand sits right here, at the intersection of two tectonic plates. On average, there are 14,000 earthquakes a year. Most of them are minor, but you get the idea. This is a country built on shaky ground. What the city of Christchurch wasn't prepared for was two earthquakes of this magnitude happening just a few months apart. The main aftershock, which did all the damage on the 22nd of February uh, in uh, 2011, was a disastrous experience. and. Uh, my wife and I were in town uh, on the street the day that that happened, and uh, it's something you'd never forget. The population of Christchurch actually decreased by 13% following the quakes as residents were forced to relocate or flee. To this day, it remains the costliest natural disaster in the country's history, with the estimated fee to rebuild the city standing at 42 billion US dollars. One of the many buildings lost that day was this 19th century cathedral. The Christchurch Cathedral is a very important asset for the city and the country. It's the what, a, a Category 1 listed heritage building. It is the icon of Christchurch, our second biggest city. It's a very important uh, part of our heritage. Before the earthquakes, more than 700,000 people visited this century and a half old building every year. That's double the number of people who actually live here. All of them came to see this church, which, if you're not from New Zealand, may not seem like a particularly remarkable building. Really, it might not have seemed that remarkable to many people until it was gone. It wasn't the tallest or grandest building in the country, nor the most expensive or the most unique. Yet, it was very much an icon of the city, and really, for the entire country. It was often spoken of as the heart of the city. When somebody said Christchurch, you pictured this building. In the earthquakes, the spire was completely destroyed, as well as the upper portion of the tower. When it collapsed, it also severely damaged the front of the cathedral, its western porch, and the adjacent walls. Its destruction came to symbolise the loss of the city itself. The people of New Zealand were devastated. At the time, it was estimated that the works could cost at least 50 million New Zealand dollars, more money than insurance would cover. So in March 2012, it was announced the church would be demolished and replaced by a new structure. Much of the rest of Christchurch was facing similar choices. What to replace the ruins of the city with, whether to replace it at all. What happens to the character and charm of a place when it has to be reconstructed as quickly as possible and on a budget? And so much of the city had to be rebuilt. The central business districts would remain closed for two years. Shipping containers were brought in as temporary places for retailers to set up shop. The city's infrastructure needed a full rebuild. That involved more than 700 individual projects, including 600 kilometers of sewer pipes, 100 kilometers of water pipes, more than 1.3 million square meters of road, and 144 bridges. Many, many heritage buildings were completely demolished during this time. The people of Christchurch saw their city's identity being stripped away. The decision to not rebuild the cathedral, the defining building of the city, was the last straw. It would be like Paris just leaving Notre Dame to ashes. A fierce debate erupted about what the true purpose of the building was. At a certain point, it had become more than just a church. 
Residents, politicians, and even a wizard all joined in to protest the demolition of this sacred structure. Yes, that's right, a wizard. Hey, it's a small country. These groups eventually helped stop the demolition of the cathedral in 2012. But it wasn't until September 2017 that the Anglican Synod finally voted to rebuild it, with financial support from the government and the trust. At this point, the cost of rebuilding had skyrocketed to 150 million New Zealand dollars. The concept design for the new church was released in October 2020, with the brief that the building should be returned to what it was before, but safer and with modern facilities. The remnants of the bell tower would be demolished so that a new tower could be built in its place. It would be almost identical to its predecessor, but this time base isolated, increasing its resiliency in earthquakes. Base isolating a structure involves putting flexible bearings or pads of rubber between the building's foundations and the structure above, like little legs to keep the church tower steady when the earth shakes below it. Because the tower had almost completely collapsed, architects had to rely on historic drawings and photographs to reconstruct it. But before any of that work could begin, the existing structure had to be stabilised. That included the external walls that were still standing, as well as the foundations themselves. And that was about a, an eight-stage process of progressively adding stability uh, facade by facade to the project, a global structural strength, uh, a combination of temporary works and uh, reinstated permanent work. And some of the things we had to do were quite tricky. For example, putting in screw piles um, 18 metres deep right beside a piece of the building that is partially collapsed. The job is one of those jobs where it's not so much what you're doing that it is the risk, it's how you're going to do it. As well as determining the full extent of the earthquake damage, the project team had to gather comprehensive information about the cathedral, including its history, how it was constructed, the ground conditions, previous restorations and strengthening works. It's not even just a normal earthquake prone building. This is a damaged and dangerous building. Then they erected huge steel frames around the site to brace elements of the cathedral while the structure was strengthened. These frames acted as an exoskeleton for the building so interior works could be completed safely. Some of those temporary steel structures have now become permanent, holding the building up. The biggest risk during construction is another earthquake, so that sets the standard for the temporary works. The team also produced a three-dimensional model of the building using drones. They sent out millions of laser beams that returned points as they hit surfaces, producing a map or point cloud of the existing building. We flew drones in and took a lot of uh, high-resolution photographs and, and videos and scans of the interiors where we couldn't get in when it was damaged and dangerous. Many of the stones that made up the church had to be removed so stabilisation could take place. Those stones had to be meticulously catalogued. Thousands of them were labelled and then shipped back again to be reused if they were suitable. None of this intricate and complex coordination between builders, engineers and architects would have been possible without today's video sponsor, Bluebeam. It allowed these teams to securely access product documents on any device, collaborate in real time and manage the entire construction project in the cloud. Information can be communicated more efficiently with industry standard markup and measurement tools. Bluebeam isn't just being used in the office. Bluebeam is being used in the field to help make city-defining projects like this a reality. Even though it's a very traditional looking project, we've taken the view that uh, we want to use the latest uh, technologies that are available. This would be a very expensive process if we didn't have blue beam and it would be a risky process. Stabilisation of the Christchurch Cathedral finished in 2023 and work is well underway to meet the 2028 completion dates. As the new structure rises on the Christchurch skyline it's become more than the stone and stained glass it's made out of. It's even become more than the symbol of just one city. And while there's still a long way to go until it's finished it's become a symbol of the city's spirit of the resilience and fight of the people who live here. When people re-entered the cathedral for the first time, there's a lot of emotion. Um, and these days I sort of say to people that are coming in for the first time, I said, you know, brace yourself. The journey to rebuild Christchurch has been long, costly and full of heartbreaking losses. 
But piece by piece, this city is being rebuilt, just like its cathedral. In 2014, just two years after the earthquakes, the New York Times named the city one of the best places to visit in the world. And that's not because everything has magically come back together. At that point, the business district was still being salvaged, and retailers were working out of shipping containers. The city was one of the best places in the world to visit because of the people here and what they've been able to make of it. Christchurch may not be the luckiest city in the world, but it's certainly one of the most tenacious. This video was sponsored by Bluebeam. You can learn more about their digital tools at the link below. There's also the chance to dive deeper on this and other topics on our channel over on the World's Best Construction Podcast, available right now wherever you get your podcasts. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, subscribe to the B1M.